five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> building a supersonic rocket. For a while now, I've been building and launching my own designs of model rockets. However, these are all primarily cardboard and 3D printed parts, and only end up going a couple hundred miles an hour. These are really exciting to launch, but they are much too heavy for their comparatively small rocket motors to even get close to breaking the sound barrier. There are several ways to make a better performing rocket, such as making a smaller and lighter airframe, or flying a bigger rocket motor. For several reasons, I chose to make a smaller airframe in order to increase the ratio of available impulse to overall mass. I'd also need to reduce the diameter in this frontal area as much as possible to reduce the amount of drag that would slow the rocket down. This led to a design decision to build the rocket around a 29mm reloadable motor case as a minimum diameter airframe, with the motor itself taking up more than half of the internal volume. Because this particular motor produced very high thrust, I incorporated this into the design, naming the rocket Blink. After running some simulations in Open Rocket, it appeared that Blink would take off under 67 pounds of thrust, accelerating at 70g until it reached a speed of Mach 1.28. This would mean that Blink would be subject to really high takeoff forces, and would need to be made out of strong materials to survive flight. Using a reasonably affordable carbon fiber tube sold for large drone frames, I could easily build a very light and strong airframe. This entire build ended up costing about $50, not including the motor case and fuel reloads. Because aerodynamic forces would be so intense, I also made the nose cone on the lathe out of billet aluminum with a tight fit to the body tube. The fins were cut out of a small sheet of carbon fiber plate and chamfered to a near knife edge before being secured with thick epoxy fillets. The internal cord that would attach to the parachute was also secured by a small machine screw passing through the side wall with a curved washer and locking nut on the opposite side. I attached an aluminum launch lug near the fins and fashioned a motor case retention clip out of a steel rod that I thought would be adequate. One. I then attached the nose cone to the body tube with a long shock cord and tied on a small parachute. Because this rocket was so small and was expected to reach 5,300 feet, I needed a way to track it for recovery so I could know what direction to go if I lost visual tracking. A simple solution to this was a stripped down remote ID module that just barely fit inside under the parachute. This is still somewhat risky due to the weak Bluetooth-based communication having a limited range of only a couple hundred meters. The carbon tube also acted as a Faraday cage, meaning that if the tracker didn't deploy properly, there'd be no location signal. With some last touches added, I decided to go for it and brought it out to the launch site. To test the tracking setup, I attached the tracker module to one of my most flight-proven rockets, the Noodler. Well, there it goes. Starting out with the perfect flight, I determined that the tracking system was good enough to use for Blink. With everything set up and conditions being mostly favorable, it's time to launch this rocket for better or for worse. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, my. <laughs> One. Ign One. Ign One. Ign oh my! <laughs> oh my! Wow! Absolutely fulfilled his name. Now I gotta find it. After a thunderous ascent, I had no idea where the rocket was, as it had seemingly disappeared into the sun. Even several minutes later, there was no sign of Blink, meaning its only hope was the small tracker. I didn't even know if it had survived such a violent takeoff. Several minutes later, there was a very faint signal from nearly a mile away. Chasing the signal across challenging terrain, the rocket was finally recovered, except for a very important part. Although I had recovered the intact airframe, the motor case was nowhere to be found. Combing the desert for several hours turned up nothing but litter and dust. 
The loss of the motor case was likely caused by the retaining clip being bent back during ejection, possibly due to too much black powder being loaded in the ejection cap. This is unfortunate because it was easily preventable by using a sturdier clip for slightly less ejection charge, but at the same time, it's better to eject the motor case with too much powder than have the no! rocket come in ballistic. That is definitely not ideal. Because I was able to recover Blink, this means that it can be flown again with a better motor retention and perhaps a better avionics package. I was not able to determine the final height or speed because my altimeter would have been destroyed by the violent acceleration. However, I can confidently say that this rocket went supersonic because even the worst case simulation predicted a speed of Mach 1.23. This build is yet another step on the path toward high power rocketry and is a very good platform to achieve supersonic performance from mid power motors that only need a level 1 certification. Blink's construction allows it to be flown with almost any 29mm composite rocket motor, even ones that don't require any certification. Using an off the shelf PVC nose cone instead of an aluminum one, Blink is a good entry level carbon fiber rocket that can be made with basic home tools. A note about working with carbon fiber at home is you will want a respirator, safety goggles, and gloves because the dust from cutting or sanding could be an issue. However, this advanced material is completely necessary to survive flight conditions. One. With a quick and exhilarating launch, Blink absolutely lived up to its name, Blink and you miss it.